So over about the last 20 or 30 years, there's been a growing appreciation of the need for qualitative work on health and illness. What's special about the work we're doing is that we're doing qualitative work, we're interviewing cohort members in tandem with the quantitative work that's being done. Well, what we want to understand is more about ageing and healthy ageing from individual perspectives. So what's special about this is that we're doing interviews with a wide range of different cohort members. We're not just focusing on people with particular diseases or conditions, but we're selecting people from across the cohort studies so that we've got different people's views on what it's like to be in later life. So because this is qualitative work, we don't have such focused research questions as we might have if we were doing statistical analysis. What we're interested in is looking at the themes that come through people's interviews. So some of the issues that we're interested in is how early life impacts on later life, but clearly not from a statistical perspective, but how the individuals understand their early life to have impacted on their later life. Some of the other things we're interested in are well-being and social participation. So understanding how people feel part of their community, how much they're involved in voluntary activities, in weekly clubs and organisations, and the impact that that seems to have on their well-being and their, their sort of psychological health. So far we've been focusing on actually collecting the data and doing the interviews. We've done a total of 170 interviews with members of the 1958 cohort study, so they were all in their early 50s when we interviewed them. We've done a further 30 interviews with people in the 1946 cohort in their early to mid 60s and another 30 interviews with people who were in the Hertfordshire study, so those are people in their early to mid late 70s, a wider age range in that cohort. So what's really great is that we've got information from people in three different decades of later life. We've done those interviews, we've um, transcribed them and we're just beginning the analysis process. So in the next year of this work package, now that we've collected the data, we can really focus on analysing the interviews. And there are perhaps two main ways that we're going to approach this. Firstly is looking at individual case studies. And this is where we can select individuals partly based on the quantitative data that's been collected on them over the years that they've been in these studies. So that we can build up profiles of people who are perhaps unusually healthy and successfully ageing and other people who are really struggling with life. We can look at their qualitative interviews and we can try and understand more about the causal mechanisms that run behind those outcomes. So that's one way that we'll be analysing the interviews. A second approach is to look thematically across all the interviews. So for example, we've asked people what makes some people healthier than others in later life. And it's really interesting to start looking at the responses people are giving. And as we might expect, people are giving many different ideas about the contributions to, to healthy ageing. So not just saying one thing, but saying it's a combination of things. It's genetics, it's partly luck, it's partly lifestyle factors. So there we're looking at a whole range of responses across the different individuals that we've interviewed. Well, what we're hoping the impact of this work will be is to enable older people's voices to be heard and to combine the research that we're doing with the more quantitative work packages so that we've got the statistical hard evidence alongside people's own perspectives on healthy ageing. And we'd hope that this will make some of the findings much more accessible to practitioners and policy makers so that they really understand ageing from the individual viewpoint and not just at a societal level.